All right, Shalom before I start. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim Akwath, learning and teaching in truth and sincerity. That's another video through the spirit. All right, modern day madness and prophecies. You know, just got a collection of clips. Let's see what's going on in this raggedy ass world till we get the fuck up out of here. All right, uh, this is something that uh, I'll start with this uh, Nickelodeon one. You know, there's a lot of evil, left-handed, you know, satanic things that go on in the background in Babylon that, you know, at first-hand appearance, things seem to be innocent, but you do some digging and you realize that everything about this world is wrapped in evil and it's influencing you to do evil uh, uh, co covertly, all right, subconsciously. Son of a bitch, come on. Now I want to fuck up. God damn it. Attention. Sound it out. Does it sound familiar? So apparently that word Nickelodeon take the N off at the end is a Latin way of saying you don't care about God. You know, so it's like, it's like, well, damn. Everybody used to watch Nick as kids, right? You know, you had uh, all that on there. Uh, you had that one show, uh, fuck, it's like with the little action figures, claymation type shit, but you know, Spongebob being most famous, you know, Jimmy Neutron, all that shit. Here it is, you know, a childhood station, a favorite, right? It's fucking satanic, and obviously no surprise. But when you look at who is in control of everything, it shouldn't be uh, hard to wonder. Uh, right here it says Howard uh, Harold Wallace Rosenthal. This is a quote. It says most Jays do not like to admit uh, admit it, but our God is Lucifer, and we are His people. All right, and when you look at who who owns the food companies, you know the automobile uh, companies, you know building companies, uh, satellites, uh, electric, you know all of it, all of it, them folk be behind it. So if these messages are being put in the media, then by process of elimination, who's putting it there? Them folk. So what are they? Them folk are evil. That's what they are. I'm at to use this clip again right here. Hang on. I to rap about that stuff. They actually pay us more when we rap about more ignorant stuff. So I make sure I even align and come up talking on stages like this. Man, I was flooded with millions of dollars from the time I was 16. And I woke up one morning and I was like, damn, they got me. Man, look at the shit I spoke about. Look at the shit I put in these people's ears. Man, I feel very wrong about a lot of things. How many lives I actually am responsible for when it comes to my music? How many kids and people have gotten in the car or put this shit in their ears and actually hurt someone? And now I'm sitting back like, damn. It's weird, I've been having these weird feelings lately. And this is kind of why I didn't want to do this song, Shake It, or like any drill song, because it's like... These songs are activating, like, these demons that I killed. I don't want to be that girl anymore. Like, I just want to be a mother. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want to be that old party anymore. I want to be a city girl. She ain't going to be no city girl. <laughs> so, so, Summer ain't allowed to be no city girl? Uh-uh. No. <laughs> I want her raise her any different. Like, no, I don't even want her to eat a seat. The night of day like that. Like, I really want her to just be, like, you know, like, level headed a school girl and just on a whole nother way. So, you know, you, you got niggas right here. Niggas got a conscience. So these niggas know that they're working for heat. Selling themselves out to get the money. Teaching demon, uh, demonology. 
but they you know they're enjoying the benefits so you know that leads us to know that we're in a spiritual war y'all this is a war not necessarily for your body but for your mind and for your soul for your devotion to Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai or to the God of this world which the rest of these people are blinded to like it tells us in Ephesians all right but let me let me go to uh, let me go to it's a spiritual war out here everything everything you thought you knew in the world is a lie okay and that's one of the first steps to waking up to this truth you got to accept that for uh, Ephesians 6 and 12 I'm gonna start right at it. it says for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places we're going against spiritual wickedness in high places you got words coming out of your mouth in English that you don't even realize are giving praise to Satan which is why Esau set this language up the way that he did all right hence the term spelling you know we, we think of it in a sense of dealing spelling words but really it's dealing with you know casting spells on folk all right everything about the society is uh, fucking demonic in a nutshell all right next clip Look at what's going on over there. Uh, man, what the fuck is this nigga doing? Man, I, may the Lord destroy niggas, bro. I'm sorry, I just look left because I see this nigga driving crazy in traffic. This nigga is literally leaned back so far in his car. It looks like he's laying on his bed watching Netflix. He and his being mad niggas, man. Niggas can't do shit. Oh, may the Lord kill niggas, man. Let me let this. <laughs> Testing for that stuff that's going on nationwide. All right, I'm, I'm gonna get another clip to pair with this because here it is. Ultimately and truly, y'all, that land don't belong to uh, to neither one of them. You know, they're doing all that uh, protesting, and that's not neither their land. Hey, uh, out here in Detroit, you know, they have their little protests. And for those who know Detroit, Michigan, or you know, it's by way of the city of Dearborn has the highest Arab American population in all the United States. You know, at every time you, you sneeze, when you look up, you're going to see an Arab out here. So them boys was out here going hard. You know, all their cars is painted with that flag. You know, you go into a liquor store, you know, you, you're getting slapped in the face with them flags and all that shit. But you see that this is, you know, this is having an effect worldwide. Now, you know, need, people are picking their sides. You know, the motherfuckers who love being up ease but they're picking uh you know the rats and the people who are uh ishmaelite sympathizers or ishmaelite themselves you know they're picking palestine but what about this Ancestors. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years. We had been here in this country, but they were spread away, taken to Africa, from Africa to the United States. To be Palestinian, that's a big problem. But to be a black Palestinian, I'm quite convinced it will be there because uh, as a black Palestinian, I am double oppressed. First of all, they oppress me as a Palestinian. Secondly, they oppress me because of my color. Whenever I go around in the Israeli side, they call me Kushi. Kushi means nigger. The more they humiliate me, the more they oppress me, the more I stick to my land. Because this is my land. I'm so rooted. We are deeply rooted as Africans, as Palestinian Africans in this land. And we know our ancestors, I'm talking about thousands and thousands of years, we had been here in this country, but they were spread away, taken to Africa, from Africa to the United States. And we know. So right there. So this guy. I don't know how much of the truth he's aware of. You know, his name is Ali Judah, but he, you know, it appears to be that he's aware of the fact that he's an Israelite, you know, by way of the diaspora, you know, 70 AD, we fled into Africa. And from there, we was grabbed up and brought to the Americas. All right. And it appears that this guy was maybe born over there. Now, whether, uh, you know, I don't, I, I, I don't know how those course of events happened, but he understands that neither of them 
are the true inheritors of that land. And this is a situation that, uh, hang on, y'all. Oh my God, these fucking dogs. Uh, this is a situation that we've been in before. I'll use the example dealing with um, First Maccabees. Uh, this ain't the first time we had to deal with heathen, you know, all up in our land. First Maccabees 15. We'll start here. Uh, this is going to be dealing with Simon, the high priest in the time of the Maccabees. You know, he was reclaiming the land and was getting the heathen out. And he had to, you know, explain himself. Right. So first Maccabees 15 and 32, it says. So at the Nobius, the king's friend came to Jerusalem. And when he saw the glory of Simon and the cupboard of gold and silver plate and his great attendance, he was astonished and told him the king's message. Then answered Simon and said unto him, We have neither taken other men's lands, nor holden that which appertaineth to others, but the inheritance of our fathers, which our enemies had wrongfully in possession a certain time. All right. We, uh, wherefore we, having opportunity, hold the inheritance of our fathers. And that's the situation we find ourselves in, y'all. All right. We, our land has been taken over by two factions of heathen, you know, and they're ho holding this crusade over it, and it don't belong to neither one of them, and that's our land, it's just that, you know, we've been kicked out for a while, and if when we, when we talk about that, people look at us like, we, nigga, we, like, we growing six eyes out our four, they're like, what the fuck your black ass know about the, the east, right, you know, what the, nigga, you from LA, what you talking about, right, so, we dealing with this, and our ancestors of old, you me, dealt with this, you know, how about that, y'all? How about that? Same old shit. All right, let's get some, uh, let's see how E is doing in the baby making department. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, Italy achieves unthinkable world record. No births in three months. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the entire country of Italy. They have not seen a birth in three months months so that, that's all we need you know this is legit this just came out nigga that's crazy you know some uh, motherfuckers you know getting a hump on but ain't nobody trying to pop no babies out why because this world is wicked and people everybody you know you have the sexual revolution the alphabet folk you know women going crazy dudes scared to get the chicks pregnant because you know they can't afford it or the chick will bug out so all these different things are compiling that y'all and and if so if motherfuckers ain't making babies then you know motherfuckers die every day b so if you're not uh replacing you know you're getting eliminated and that's all a part of esau's plan y'all that's all a part of it now let's look at some of the let's look at some of the factors of to why maybe people ain't ain't having kids like that what are some of the things that are going to be true let's let's look at the minds of the people who should be making babies well, what type of shit are they on all right they're in the bathroom uh is he playing a song? yes playing a song so basically so you had this girl in college she's sitting there you know getting high in the bathroom or whatever and what this dude's gonna do he basically went and took her information and sent it to the dean of the college <laughs> and it cold-blooded uh, and he set it on a timer. So he was able to get her info. All that stuff. Man, that's what, man. Niggas is crazy. He found all that stuff. He was able to find her, uh, school. So fast forward. So basically, the nigga emailed their principal. So you see, you know, you got kids in school doing drugs. You got, uh, I, I know y'all seen that, uh, that one bitch talking about, uh, you can't take me to, uh, what was that? You can't take me to, uh, what's that? Uh, fuck. Don't you see how good I look? You can't take me to no, uh, what's that restaurant, y'all? God damn, man. Cheesecake factory. All right. Niggas has got to deal with that. What else we got? Hold up. Oh, here, hang on. Let's do this. I want to start with you. Do not talk Bible to me because you're going to get put down. T. 
two minutes later. I swing both ways. Other relationships other than straight, they have a lot of different morals than straight. If you read the Bible, any sexual deviance outside of men and women is immoral. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so what you talking about? There's a lot of religions, and there's a lot of different genders, and there's a lot of different sexuality. We've just How many genders are there? Right now, we're up to like 12, maybe? 12 genders? Uh, 12 different genders, yeah. So if there are 12 genders, why do people have a gender reveal party? For their child okay. that is newborn okay. that hasn't come out of the womb yet. And how many genders do they have to choose from when they have a gender reveal party? Two. Exactly. Point proven. So therefore, you're being psyoped by society. You are sold to put a blindfold over your eyes and say, hey, I'm an elephant. Guess what? You are an elephant. You know truthfully that there are two genders because it can only be two genders in a gender reveal party. Male or female, a boy or girl, it's blue or pink. When you get into all of this other stuff, you're being psyop. Your brain is being confused to believe in things that are just not true. Oh, are we losing one? We are We're losing one. Yeah, so right there. So you see, you know, he shut her down. But I, the reason why I'm showing this, y'all, it's not hard to see why motherfuckers ain't trying to make babies and start no family. Look at the minds of the young people. Their minds are fucking scrambled like eggs. And the term, I'm going to have to start using that term more. You're being, these folk or niggas is being psyoped. Psychological operation on, god damn it. These people are being psyop into just being little retard dummies. So it ain't no motherfucking wonder why uh, ain't nobody trying to make no babies. It ain't no motherfucking wonder out here in this modern day world. Uh, let me look at uh, now. You look at the opposite and how are women supposed to be? Now this woman, uh, hey, now hey, this right here, this trick. You know, she's running, talking about she want Tyrese back. You know, so all, let me see. Same frame of mind I was in when I did it. When you say that, but what frame of mind was that? What, what do you mean by that in particular? I was very, <clears throat> very hurt. See, she's talking about now, 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 you know, she's trying to get back to that money. I don't even know what she her ass name is Lee. I don't know if she's a gook, if she's Northern King. I don't know what the fuck. But you see, you, you see the relationship between men and women ain't so hot right now. That's why motherfuckers ain't having no babies. Okay. Let me get a, uh, let me get a. Uh, let me get this. How's it? How? So he's going to ask her a question and let's see what happens. First, your son, your husband, or your dad? Let me tell you something. My husband. He's number one? He's number one. Who's number two? My child. And then your dad? Oh, then my dad, yes. Why your dad last though? My dad would be first if I wasn't married. Okay. Now pause right there. That's the correct answer. That's the correct answer. That's the right or she said her husband, her son, then her dad. And if she wasn't married, then her father would be first because, you know, she wouldn't have children. And this guy, he starts digging a little bit deeper. You know, he's trying to get her to say something off. But that's the correct answer. And now, you know, she's dressed like a street harlot and she's slightly drunk. But even in her drunkness, she was still able to give the correct answer. But now if things were like that, families wouldn't be falling apart. So, even if you're married, why her last? Because my mama got him. <laughs> okay. My Wait. mama got him. I don't have to hold him down. Okay. My mom's solid. I see. But he's your dad, though. He's my dad, but my mom's 100, and she's 15 years younger than my daddy. I should never have to take care of my daddy. It's on her type shit. It's on her. If she's a Scorpio, she holds it the fuck down. My mom has her virginity to my daddy. They've been together for 50 years. So they're doing what they're supposed to. So, hey, hey, outside of that Scorpio shit, she gave all correct answers. You know, so, you know, now she dressed like a city harlot. She. Uh, you know, is probably more than likely a demon, uh, you know, without a doubt. But whoever her husband is, you know, whatever, uh, you know, he's probably fucking happy or whatever. But she gave the correct answer. She said, my mom's supposed to be holding my pops down, you know. So so you see, man, this place, it's just, it's confused. Could you ever cheat on me? Absolutely. That's why you don't make dumb decisions, like talking to guys one-on-one -on -one or hanging out in like compromising situations i'm a human being you're a human being and I, i'm sorry babe i don't know if this is hard for you to to hear but everybody is absolutely capable of 
level of infidelity in the right slash wrong circumstances. Oh, okay. That's why boundaries are so important. You're never going to see me in a situation, even if people think I might be too strict. I don't care. I'm not taking that chance. Amen. I'm not putting myself in a position to even be close to a position to potentially fall to temptation. I'm going to keep it 100 because anyone is capable of cheating, but I will not be cheating on you. Excellent. I love that. I love you. And so she gave a good answer. And when, now when you go to the comments, you see niggas talking shit. Uh, but she kept it real. No, yeah. Uh, uh, any Anybody is capable of committing adultery, which is why you shouldn't be putting yourselves in situations, especially ladies, to commit adultery. Right? And she kept it real. You shouldn't be drinking. You shouldn't be talking with niggas. Now, how many women is, is, is you know, got the balls to say that and don't got the balls in the first place? But you, you know what I mean. Right? So it, it's it's no... You know, I had all them clips. It's no wonder why niggas ain't making babies. It's over, y'all. Motherfuckers, the age of scriptures tell you that, uh, you know, the man and woman are supposed to become one flesh. Well, that has been divided. Esau Edom has divided that dynamic. All right, now what do we have? Jeremiah 31 and uh, 22. How long wilt thou go about, O thou backsliding daughter? For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. A woman shall compass a man. So now with the... Order being out of place, you know, motherfuckers ain't trying to make babies no more. You know, it's all through. It's all, it's all, it's all over, and we're sliding our way closer to the end of all this. Uh, to the end of all this, y'all. Let me see. Let me get. Uh, uh, let me get. It will completely. That's funny. Uh, let me get uh, Salakia. There's just so much. I saved so many of these, y'all. And really, I don't even be planning which ones I'm going to pick. I just grab what's most fucking convenient or whatever. You know, Spirit has me get, I should say. Uh, let's deal with... You know what? Yeah, let's deal with this. American freedom in history, you should know. Did you know the concept of family reunions came from black American freedmen? After being freed on paper, black Americans sought to reunite with lost family members. While the transition to freedmen was not an easy one, black families who were stripped of their names, rights, identity, and separated for years still made every effort to reunite with lost loved ones. Freedmen would place information wanted ads in newspapers, publish newspaper advertisements, and use word of mouth in search of any family they could remember. Sadly, some were never discovered, but many were found. Those who were found created a tradition to stay in touch, extended family members, met up on specified dates or holidays all over the country to build new ties of kinship, meet new and old family members, cook, dance, and more. This family tradition became a tangible symbol of resilience that we now know as family reunion. Today our family reunions continue, but not nearly as much. You just need to know that the concept started with us. So that was about it. But right there, you know, couldn't find out, y'all. You know, and not to too much surprise, we started family reunions. Why? Because we were slow in the slavery. Why? Because Esau eat him. And his, uh, you know, what he did to us. All right. What else? Often white people will meet a black person who completely challenges every racial stereotype that they've ever had. Rather than giving up the stereotype, they, they create a special category for that person and say, well, you're, you're not like other black people. Or instead of saying, my ideas of black people were too narrow or too... And, and I think that's the tragedy of any kind of prejudicial thinking that w when we confront any, the circumstance that tells us it's not so, we frequently don't enlarge our sense of things. We, we actually come up with new ways to protect and defend that way of thinking. So right there, you know, she broke it down, you know. It could, <laughs> oh, you just a good nigga, boy. So you, you see, y'all, hey, the, the majority of the things that this guy doing what he did to us still impacts us to this day. You know, the foods that niggas eat, the, 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 you know, the things that niggas like doing or not doing. The reason why niggas in hood, if we can all, we can point that finger back at E. And he likes to run around and pretend like he wasn't responsible. Well, he is responsible. All right. And family reunions and, you know, coming up, growing up, you know, you know, you'll have them. And you'll, I remember, you know, 
you mention it to some of your white boys or white friends, you know, uh, uh, Arabic friends or uh, East Indian friends at school, they look at you like, what the fuck is a family reunion? Well, they didn't get they didn't get dominated by Esau like us. So they don't have to do it. They know all their uh, cousins and all that. They can pick up the phone and call their cousins back in Bangladesh. Meanwhile, you don't even know who the fuck you're man, you uptight to even find out who your father is. All right, in most cases. All right, so the Esau's so-called racism ain't going nowhere, and we're still feeling the effects of it today. It's just that most Edomites try to be subtle about it, and some are, are not subtle about it. And the ones that are not subtle about it is right here. Trash. Okay. But you are nigger trash. Okay. But you are nigger trash. Okay. Okay. Right. Keep talking. I will. Okay. Get the fuck away from you, classes. What you gonna do? I, I tell you what. You know. I'm a stupid nigger, everybody. I'm yeah, a she is a nigger. stupid nigger. He hit my plate. I'm a stupid nigger. Go fix your car. It's not honking at people when you don't eat. Shut your bitch ass. So you see, you know, this guy. It, it ain't went nowhere, y'all. It ain't went nowhere. He's not a cop. He's a security guard. And he's a fucking dunce. The nigga got a hat on. You know, he Paul Bart Mall cop uh, type spirit. But, you know, apparently he hit the chick with his car. And it was all bold and proud. So we're still... Uh, racism is well and alive. That's the point of these last couple of videos. Racism is well and alive. And it affects so-called racism. All right. You, un you understand what I mean. The system of white supremacy that Esau Edom has set in play. To get himself a foot a foothold and a leg up over us, and he likes to pretend now that it's not here just because we're allowed to fuck white bitches. That doesn't uh, that hasn't fixed our situation, nor does it clear him of his guilt of what he's done to us. Our very life here that we live is the evidence that he didn't did us greasy. All right, so hey, go to one of the classics. Don't forget who your enemy is here. All right, Sirach twelve. We are not on the other side yet. We are still in the trenches, if you will. Sirach 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. All right, and as we get close to the end, you know, he, he's, he's, that nature is coming back about him. The fact that he's a demon and he's put here to take peace on the earth. And he's about to remind everybody on earth of that. You know, many of our people, they're asleep. They think that this nigga, he's a good... No, he's not a good guy. The so-called white man will come and destroy everything you love and care about. Alright, so that's about it, y'all. You know, just grabbing what's going on in the news, man. This place, these people. Fuck them all, alright? And give all praises to Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakodash. The to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations. So I'd like to Akim Akwa. Learning, teaching, truth, and sincerity. Shalom.